Why don't you just open your mouth this morning. Let's begin to worship the Lord. Let's begin to glorify the Lord. Begin to call the Lord by all the names that he is known. The Lord our God. Elohim Shomri. Jehovah Shomri. El Gibor. Jehovah Rohi. The Lord my deliverer. The lion of the tribe of Judah. My Jesus. My savior. Begin to worship the Lord. Open your mouth. You are not here because you can pray. You are not here because you know how to do anything. Thing. We are here because of the mercy of the Lord. Worship the Lord. Glorify the Lord. Worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Worship the precious Trinity. Worship the Lord, strong and mighty. Worship the Lord, our healer, my deliverer. I glorify you, God. There is no God like you. I worship you, El Elyon, the Most High God. I worship you, God. Receive your glory receive worship receive adoration there is nobody like you Jesus I bless your holy name I hallow your name our father who art in the third heaven I bless you God you are the anointed one and his anointing you are Jesus Christ of Nazareth I worship you Jesus I worship you Alpha Omega I worship you the bright and the morning star I worship you. I worship you, the rainmaker. I worship you, the life giver. I worship you alone, Jesus. There is no God beside you. There is no God above you. You are inexplicable. You are the life giver. I worship you. You are the one that holds my life together. You are the lifter up of my head. You are my shield and my buckler. You are my fortress and my hiding place. You are my strong tower. Jesus, you are my surety, you are my assurance, you are my confidence, you are my strength, you are my hope, you are my peace, you are my joy, you are the life giver. I worship you, Jesus. I give you glory and honor. In Jesus' matchless name we pray and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. You may please be seated. Thank you so much, God, uh, King Squire. Yeah, God Squire. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, glory to God. Ah, I bless God. I titled the message this morning of my teaching, Holy Things. Holy Things. Dedicated Things consecrated things. There are some things that belong just to God, nobody else. It doesn't belong to any imperial majesty. It doesn't belong to a king. It doesn't belong to a, co a queen. It doesn't belong to any apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. It does not belong to anyone created. Our only uncreated God, the mighty one of Zion. He has those things that are regarded to him as holy things. And one of the greatest things that the Lord could have done is to have given us the word. Because if you're in a relationship with something, if they tell you, I like this and I don't like this, you're going to have a very successful relationship. And you stay away from the things that they don't like and you amplify, you magnify and you do the things that they like. You're going to have a very fruitful relationship. Forget that you call me mama. If I jump out of, the, uh, of here right now, take somebody's key and drive off a Mercedes Benz from the car park, what do you think? Talk to me. What has happened? Stolen. Theft. I've taken what is not mine. That's exactly the same situation when God says, these are mine, and you touch it. You are regarded as a thief. And you will be dealt with as such. And so this morning is serious. I had no intention of doing an anointing service. It was while I finished teaching last week. And as I sat down, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, have an anointing service today. And during the week, he gave me further instructions. And that's when I sent out the word that bring honey. I brought my honey and I brought one for AP and his household. There's nothing special about these cute bottles. Um... 
when I finish, Pastor Gertrude, just walk up here and take one. It's not in the oil. It's not in the honey. It is in our faith. The Lord says, be it unto you according to your faith. But I will share with you the word of the Lord on what honey symbolizes. And that will be every day of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ is the anointed one and he, the anointing. So whatever object, be it oil, this time the Lord instructed me and said, bring honey. When there was poisoning of the water in the book of Kings, the Lord said to the prophet, throw salt in it. And the poison and the death will stop. It's crucial to hear the instructions of the Lord and more important to obey them as much as we can. So this morning my uh, teaching is serious and it has nothing to do with it. Usually you will try and base the teaching on the anointing service. No, they're two separate services and they will go according to how the Lord God Almighty wanted them in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning I want to mention eight of those holy things consecrated things, dedicated things, things that belong to God. I call them personally for myself the untouchables. Do whatever you want to do. Be a child of God. Be whatever else God will call you. But the things that belong to God, belong to God. Leave them alone. And you will learn the same and the Holy Spirit will help us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Please turn your Bibles with me to Leviticus chapter 27 verse 28. It says, nevertheless, no devoted offering that a man may devote to the Lord of all that he has, both man and beast, or the field of his possession shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted offering belongs to the Lord. Every devoted offering. So there are certain offerings that belong to God. There are certain things in the temple that belong to God. We will hear of them shortly. Number one, the most serious that God said, don't even think about it, is his glory. Go with me to Isaiah 42 verse 8. It says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. And I will not give my glory to or praise to any carved images. You see why you can't have saints anything? You see why you, we can't make anything into an object of worship? It becomes an idol. And no idol will live before the Lord our God. He told us, he said, I'm a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other God before me. But here he particularly said, my glory I will not give to another. So all glory must go to God. All glory belong to him. What is glory? Glory is the essence of God. Glory is when we see the dead raised, we know the power of resurrection has made it happen. Glory is when somebody got saved. Instead of you saying, I led them, I made them, I said... It is God who made it happen. You can preach between now and Timbuktu. The Bible says it is only the Holy Spirit that can make a man to say that Jesus is Lord. It is not a knowledge or a revelation that comes easily to man. To say that Jesus was born of a virgin. All the glory must be to God. Go with me and look in Daniel chapter 4 verse 30. I'm still explaining the glory of God. The king spoke saying, it's now, it's not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. This is a man talking. This was King Nebuchadnezzar. We know what happened to him, right? This great Babylon, I built it. For my royal wedding. I did it by my mighty power. I did it for the honor of my majesty. A man. And the Lord showed him immediately. Who is God and who is not. One of the clearest revelation I have about my life. Is I know that I'm not God. I'm far from it. I am a small letter God. Because of the DNA of the God that birthed me. But nothing puts me to be anywhere near him. This king 
Because he said this, because he arrogated himself to, to the might, to the power, to the majesty of God, the Lord made him to become a beast. He crawled into the forest and ate grass like an animal for seven years. That's what happened. You touch the glory of God, you become less than the human being that the Lord God Almighty has created you. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, teach me never to touch your glory. Teach me. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me to revere the glory of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I totally love the girl with that behind the... Um, camera. I'm always so worried about people behind the camera that did they hear the word? Can they hear the word? But I just saw her repeating and doing exactly what everybody is doing. Number two of the untouchables of God is his honor. Malachi chapter one verse six. It says a son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, remember how Jesus taught us to pray? He said, pray thus, our father, not my father, not your father, our father. He's the father of the living. He's the father of everything that he created. Is there, if then I am the father, where is my honor? Some people honor their ministry more than God. Some people honor their spouses more than God. Some people honor their relationships more than God. Some people honor what title, position, what they're doing for God, what God has required of them to do for him. They lift him above God. He said, if I am the father, where is my honor? If I am the master, where is my reverence? Says the Lord God of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth. Where is my honor? And I began to pray. I said, Lord, let all of my life glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, teach me the protocol of honor. Teach me the protocol of heaven. Let nothing in my life dishonor you. Lord, let me honor you in my thoughts where nobody can see. Let me honor you with my words. Let me honor you with my action. Let my household honor you. Let my family honor you. Honor means to give reverence. Honor means to revere. Honor means to be in awe of and there's no other person that deserves honor yes we honor the fivefold ministry we honor the leadership we honor but all of those are not must never be in the category to honor God and I pray that the Lord would turn temple of praise to a church that honors God not a church of feigned honor not a church of hypocrites not a church of in the mouth only not a church of saying I honor God but when God tells you something you don't do it that's number one dishonor disobedience is rebellious to god and it's can you imagine if you are in the army if you're in the navy if you're a seal and a, co a command came from the commander in chief and you are analyzing it can you imagine that is that possible it's impossible when an earthly commander gives you a command, you immediately obey it. Yet, when God speaks to us from his word, is God speaking to man, we analyze it. We put it through all manners of things that we think our understanding. Analysis of spiritual things leads to paralysis. That's what Charles Harden Spurgeon said, and it's still true. You are, you, we cannot understand or explain God by our cerebral intellect. May my life give God honor in the name of Jesus. May this church be turned into a people that are not paying God lip service. May we genuinely honor God. May we be a people that, on, that honors God in our thoughts, in our actions, and towards one another. When you honor God, it overflows. You don't have to do it. It's not an obligation. It's not a duty. It's your lifestyle. May our lifestyle honor God. May our children honor God. May our marriages honor God. May our covenant relationships honor God. In the mighty name of Jesus. If they have done it right, God will not be asking that, where is my honor? And it is only when something belongs to you that you say, where is my, where is the thing I gave you? Where is this? If it belongs to you, you ask for it. It belongs only unto God. Where is my honor? 
I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that God will use us to glorify himself on earth and we will be of honor to him in anything we do. In the highest office you take, may people know you as a person of honor in the mighty name of Jesus and not hypocrisy because the church has mastered hypocrisy. The church has mastered a, a way where they can greet you 49 times so you will not notice their decayed habits. May that not be you. Because if a man can see you, God can see you. On the day Judas joined the ministry of Jesus, Jesus knew him. But Jesus still honored him. Jesus still blessed him. Jesus mentored him. Jesus gave him everything. He gave every other 11 disciples. God can see you if nobody else does. You say, oh, I respect your opinion. But you take the opinion and you make a mess of it. You disobey it. Jesus gave the two examples of such people. He said, God said, go and do this. One said, I'm clearly, I'm not going to do it. That's preferable to the one who says, okay, I've heard you, I'll go and do it. And then they don't do it. May our lives not bring dishonor to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, every firstborn child belongs to God. Every firstborn child must be dedicated and consecrated to God. Let's look in Exodus 13 verse 2. It says, consecrate to me. This is the Lord God Almighty speaking. All the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. Uh, some people will want to tell you when they want to be argumentative and say that, oh, he, he said to Israel. If I said to you, are you a descendant of Abraham? How many people will agree? If I said to you, Abraham's blessings are mine, do you want it? How many people will take it? How many people want to walk in the fullness of the covenant of God over Israel is the word of God. From Genesis to Revelation, there is not one that says it's for this group of people. It's for a people of faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says that the blessing of Abraham may rest on the Gentiles. That's the blessing. That blessing rests upon us. It's from the tribe of Israel. It's from the root of Israel. Every firstborn belongs to God. A long time ago when I taught on the firstborn child, we would do a child uh, firstborn rededication. But when I come to your home and I uh, name your child, I'm dedicating that child to God. When we bring that child 40 days after birth to church to be dedicated to God, that child is being dedicated to God. But make sure as a Christian parent, you lay hand on your firstborn child, uh, break off every curse associated with firstborn children and dedicate that child to God consecrate that child to God tell them like Samuel all you will do all your life is to glorify God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 2 verse 23 this was done it says as it is written in the law of the Lord every male who opens the womb shall be called holy that word holy means unique that word holy means different that's why I said holy things of God, holy dedicated things of God. Every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Why do you say every male and you didn't say female? Well, inside the male, God pulled out the female. There is no male, there is no female, there is no gender discrimination in the Lord God Almighty. Where he says sons, we are sons. Where he says kings, we're all kings. Where he says priests, we're all priests. Where he says male, the female is inside that male. And if you don't believe me, you can read the accounts in Genesis chapter 1. The Lord created the male in, 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 in chapter 2. God pulled the woman out of the ribs of the male and he formed the woman very deep and I'll leave it there. But this was being done to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. He was 100% man. He didn't say because you are the son of God. He didn't say because you are the savior of the world. He didn't say because you are redeemer. We're going to skip the word of the Lord. The word of God is not a respecter of person. It was done to Jesus. Every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Every female that opens the womb is holy to the Lord. Is a holy position 
is dedicated. It's a blessed position. Everything that belongs to the father belongs to that child. A while ago, we did the dedication of the firstborn. Children, it may come back if the Lord wants it. Number four, Ezekiel 44.30. What belongs to God? First fruits. You find out that first fruits is way more than money. First fruits belong to God. From 2001 was when I first heard of it. And I heard of it in such a supernatural manner. It was incredible. A man of God was visiting our church and he just said to me, oh, have you ever heard of first fruit? I said, no. And he taught me and he said, I have these teachings that I will give to you. I want you to know it. And it's something that you must be doing. I came to church that Wednesday for Bible study to teach. One young man came to me and said, I was um, invited to another church and the preacher there was teaching on first fruits. I've never heard you teaching on first fruits. You will be blessed by it. He gave me the tapes. Everywhere I turned to first fruits. How many people were here in 2001, 2002? I want to tell you that all of us that's been there, that's been here, we've given from that time. I was reminding Pastor Sam of it last week Sunday. I don't know what he came for in my room. But I said to him that, do you realize that from 2022 January that we started giving first fruits, you've always been giving first fruits. God must do something for you for obedience in the name of Jesus. You can give your time. You can give your talent. In the olden days, they used to do it by what they do. They'll bring the first. It's the principle of the first that it belongs to God. And in our case, is money. I've received a, a first fruit from one man. He said, I'm giving first fruit of my first hour. Do you know what his first fruit for one hour is? 2,600 and something dollars. I was shocked. I'm like, I'm curious to know how much his salary is a week. But I couldn't ask him before, because, before they said that uh, something was happening. But I pondered about it. One hour was his first fruit that he was persuaded to give. It's more than money. It's a principle that says, God, in everything I put you first. Is the same principle that governs the tithe. And I'm going to get there in a minute. But first fruit is a whole lump sum. Ezekiel 44, 30. It said the best of all first fruits of any kind and every sacrifice of any kind from all your sacrifices shall be the priests. Also, you shall give the priests the first of your meal of your ground to cause a blessing to rest on your house. From the time that AP has assumed the position of the associate pastor, he's never touched anyone's first fruits. This year, he gave me the first fruits that Pastor Sam, Pastor B.C., Caleb King gave to him. There can't be two priests. There can't be two shepherds over any commissioning. He understands that give it to me and I give it to God. It's always been like that. At the end of the day, when you tithe to the priest, the priest gives it to God, uh, to a priest that stands in the order of Melchizedek. The, 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 the blessing rests on your household. The first fruit belongs to God. You must not touch it. If you can give God your firstborn child, what is money? If I ask you this morning, Dickin Francis, does God own you? Do you belong to God? That's what I believe. I believe I belong to God. I believe God owns me. If God owns me, body, soul, and spirit, what is my money? Think about it. So every time that you don't want to give God the first fruit of your money is because the devil is afflicting your obedience. It's nothing else. If I ask everybody, will you give your, I give myself away, I give myself to you. We give yourself. So if you give all of yourself, what is money? If you give all of who you are, what is money? You give your reputation, you give your firstborn child. God says it belongs to me. Let me tell you something about what belongs to God. One time the Lord God Almighty said to me to give a jewelry. To a lady in this church, she turned 50. Ah, he pained me. 
It's a new choral set. It's brand new. I wind and wind and wind. And I said, okay, I'll give it eventually. Then guess what? I forgot to give the jewelry. Then after a long while, I'm like, ah, she's like 50 something now. I forgot. I can't just go out of nowhere and give her this jewelry. One day I went back to want to use the jewelry. It had broken in two very conspicuous places. I had Joyce Meyer giving the same testimony. She said, God said to her, give your fur coat. She was like, ah, do you know how much I paid for this fur coat? It's not something I could just give like that. And she tell God, let me give her another coat. I have so many other coats. The Lord said, give her that fur coat. She didn't. And she hid it in, in, a zip, in a bag behind her wardrobe like, oh, God can't see it there. And she kept giving other coats, gave the lady, gave the other people even things that she was not supposed to give. On the day that she wanted to go and wear the coat, it was ruined. It was stained. It was slashed. What belongs to God, God has already taken it. Keeping it does not make it holy in your hand. When we give God the first, the principle of the first means that the first blesses the rest. Jesus is the first fruit of every living. Jesus is the firstborn of every living. You think about it in your mind. If I say I give myself to God, then what is, why do I have a problem with first fruits? Why do I have a problem with tithing? Because they will tell you it's the Old Testament, it is New Testament. Uh, tithing is what comes before the law. Abraham was the first person. My next point that belongs to God is tithe. Let me share a couple, uh, two more scriptures quickly on first fruits. Look with me in Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-nine. Mm, I think that's not what I want. Look in Jeremiah 2, 3. It said Israel was holiness to the Lord. The first fruit of his increase. All that devour him will be against God. That's why nobody will ever, ever be able to conquer Israel. Israel is the first fruit of nations to God. It's God says all that comes against Israel, they will be devoured and disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing that can change it. When the, the Israel was taking the battle, the first city that they conquered was the city of, of um, Ai. And the Lord God Almighty told them, he said, don't touch anything in this place. Every other one, Jericho, every other one, the Lord gave them is like, share it, be blessed with it. But this particular one, don't touch it because it was not just a first fruit. It was also the tithe of the war and the nations that will occupy First fruits belong to God. Tithing belongs to God. Number five is tithe. Remember I gave the analogy where I said if I take your car keys, jump into your Mercedes and drive away with it and you don't have a relationship with me, it's not that you say mama test drive my car or something. I just drove and I faced Delaware. You are going to say that, call the police and say my car is missing, somebody stole it. Look at the language of God in Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. It says, will a man rob God? I've always wondered about it, that who can have the audacity to rob God? But you rob God when you take what belongs to him. He's robbing, he's stealing, he's thieving. There's no other kind of way, there's no other politically correct way to tell you. It's the word of God. It's your choice whether you want to obey it or you don't want to obey it. My job is to expound on the word of God. It says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. And you say, in what way have we robbed you? Clear as day. It says in tithes and in offerings. Any man that keeps the first 10%, any Christian, let me not say any man, any Christian, any believer, anyone that wants to please God, anyone that is obedient to God, when you keep the first 10%, that is your tithe. The first off the top. When you keep it, it belongs to God. You've robbed God. And another interpretation of that word rob is because you have robbed me, because you have stolen from me, you make it impossible to walk in the fullness of my blessing. 
You can say, but some other people have money and they don't even tithe. They're not even Christian. Sure, that is very valid and it is very true. But the Bible says that it is the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and adds no sorrow. You want your blessing, you want your money to add no sorrow to you. Otherwise, in their billionaire status, in their millionaire status, in their celebrity status, they will not be dying. They will not be committing suicide. Their money would have been enough for them. But it is the money where God... God has taken your 10%. Does that mean if I tithe, um, I will not have any problem? You will have a problem. Everybody will have a problem. But between you and the problem stands the Lord God Almighty. Who said in verse 9, give me verse 9 and 10, please. Verse 9 says, I will rebuke, you are cursed with a curse. This is the Bible. This is not my, anybody. This is not anybody speaking any word over you. When you don't do that, you are cursed with a curse. And the reason why you are cursed with a curse is, it's either you obey or you disobey. There's no gray area. If you obey, the blessings fall. If you move to the mountain of disobedience, curses are on it. That's why he said you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10 says, bring all the tithe. You look at the word bring. Some other says give. It's a command. It's not a suggestion. God is not arguing with it about it. It belongs to me. The first of the 10% plus your offerings, the whole lump sum of every blessing I bless you with belongs to me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord God of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing and I will rebuke the devourer. This one we prayed so heavily uh, at prayer morning glory this morning. The anointing and the power of God was just on that word. For the Lord to rebuke the devourer. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this year before in my life. Every time you open the news, every time you pick up the newspaper, every time you somebody is just falling down dead everywhere like pack of flies. Yet the Lord will not allow it to come near our dwelling. What is going on? What is wrong? Why are young people dying? Why is a 28-year-old having a colon cancer? Why is 23-year-old, 25-year-old that's uh, on its way to Super Bowl will just fall down? Why are students going and just dying recklessly in accidents? Okay, these things happen, happen every year. But there has been such a, a, an outpouring, avalanche of the spirit of devourer. It will not come near your dwelling in the name of Jesus. Your, 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 your mind will not be devoured. Your peace will not be devoured. Devoured. Your marriage will not be devoured. Your family will not be devoured. Your mind will not be devoured by the power in the name of Jesus. I stand this morning to rebuke the devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ will come upon you in the name that is above every other name. The blood of the Passover. Huh? The devourer will pass over you. The tragedy will pass over you. You will not bury your children in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be buried. Nobody will gather to say sorry to you this year. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the devourer unleashed in America miss you. May the glory of the Lord cover you with the inapproachable light of God that covers the throne of God. I cover your life in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord be merciful to us. May the Lord show us mercy. May the Lord protect our children. May the Lord protect our light. May the Lord be jealous for us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let the devourer of your covenant relationships be destroyed. Let the devourer of your marriages be destroyed. Whatever trap the enemy has set for your marriage this year, it will not work. It will self-destroy in the name of Jesus. And whatever devourer is devouring your opportunities, everybody that should be married, whatever has devoured your opportunities, I snuff life out of the devourer in the name of Jesus. May 
the Lord not dev- allow devour to devour our youth. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, our children will not be devoured. In the mighty name of Jesus, our household, our jobs, uh, it shall not be devoured. In the name of Jesus, put the blood upon your head right now. Put the blood of Jesus upon your head. Uh, seal yourself with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Uh, in the name of Jesus, say, I belong to God, uh, body, soul, and spirit. I belong to God. My mind belongs belongs to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, no devourer, uh, no plague shall come near the, my dwelling. I rebuke the plague uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. A thousand will fall to my left, ten thousand to my right. It shall not come near my dwelling. The arrow, it will not waste you at noonday in the mighty name of Jesus. The sun will not harm you. The moon will not harm you. By the power that is in the name of Jesus, the wind they shall not blow contrary to you. I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. You may please be seated. I wish it was just about money. Money is the cheapest thing. If God needs money, he will go and get a fish in the river and bring out a gold coin. A thousand cattle upon the hill belongs to him. Silver is his. All gold is his. If he needs money, he will not ask you. He is teaching us the godly principles that we might have a godly life, a godly result, and a God advantage over the world. In the mighty name of Jesus. I wish it was just about money. It's more than money. Don't you think Abraham would have given money when God asked him for Isaac? It's like, Lord, no, don't take Isaac. I waited a hundred years to give birth to Isaac. Let me give you 10,000 cattle. Let me give you a million billion dollars. But don't touch my son. God wants us. God wants our full commitment. They said between egg and bacon, who gave the most? You can break an egg and the chicken will still live. You can hatch eggs, chicken will still live. But by the time you are eating a bacon, a pig has died. You've got to be in it all in all. My God in Zion, fasting is not a diet, it's not our hunger strike. It's a principle of giving me what belongs to you, what you love. It has nothing really to do with money. It's just that our hearts and we love money and God wants to break that greed. That's why he asked for the tithe. That's why he asked for the first fruit. He said, I gave you 100%, give me 10. Isn't that a fair bargain? I gave you the whole year. I gave you the mind. I gave you the idea. I gave you the creativity. I gave you the, the fruitfulness. I gave you the fertility. Can you not give me your first, the whole lump sum? Think about it. It has nothing to do with money. It's about honor. We honor God. Number six, worship. Worship. Worship completely belongs to God. If you want tithing in the New Testament... Go to Hebrews chapter 7. I'm not going there, but you can go there. I'm not really teaching about tithing. It's just one of the holy things that you must not touch. If you also want a a, a scripture in uh, the New Testament, Matthew 23, 23 also will tell you. This is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. He was talking and rebuking the Pharisees. He said, yeah, Pharisees, you give tithe. And that is good. And you should. That's what Jesus said. But more than your tithe, more than your money, more than your showmanship, God wants your heart. God wants the purity of your heart. So Jesus said, yeah, you should tithe is what you should do. But it's not the highest. I'm telling you, there's no amount of tithe that you can give God to buy God. Nothing. Somebody who has no job, who has no money, who tithes their time, they have the same value. It's not the money. It's the principle. It's the heart of you putting God first in everything. Number six is worship. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11, it says, God has highly exalted Jesus. God has given Jesus the name which is above every other name. 
That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow to Jesus. Every knee of those in heaven, every knee of those on earth, and of those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5, it says, Thou shalt worship, thou shalt have no other God but me. Thou shalt have no other God but me. If you can, media, please give me 2 Kings 17, 35 to 36, and Exodus 34, 14. 2 Kings 17, 35 to 36, and Exodus 34, 14. While you're looking for that, let me go to Exodus 34, 14. That is easy to quickly reach. Exodus 34, 14, it says, for you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. That's his name, Jealous. He's jealous for honor, jealous for glory, jealous for your firstborn, jealous for your first fruit, jealous for your tithe, jealous for everything that belongs to him. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. 2 Kings 17, 35 to 36. It says, with whom the Lord has made a covenant and charged them saying, you shall fear no other God. This is so powerful. You shall fear no other God. You must not bow down to them. You must not serve them. You must not sacrifice to them. If you put every other God in this category, it will erase fear. It will erase anxiety. It will erase stress. I can't worship two people at the same time. I've already worshipped God. I can't worship fear. I cannot worship uh, oh generational curse. If there's a generational curse, there's a generational blessing. I'm not going to worship the next Negative. The Lord said, only me you hallow, only me you worship. There is no other God beside me. Jesus is the only name that every knee on earth, under the earth, and in the heavens must bow to. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. It says, when he again began to bring the firstborn into the world, saying, he was speaking of Jesus, let all the angels worship him. Let all the angels worship him. Number seven, this is so, so serious. Blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit, look at his name, Holy Spirit. We're talking about holy things, dedicated things, consecrated things, things that belong to God. He is God, Holy Spirit. Nobody must blaspheme him. Is the only sin that God says, I will never forgive. Look in Mark chapter 3, verse 28 and 29. Assuredly, when the Bible says assuredly, pay attention. When the Bible says verily, verily, pay attention. When the Bible says most assuredly, pray most and most attention. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men. But whatever blasphemies they may utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. It's not in a deep parable. This is not Greek. This is not Hebrew. We don't have to go into it. It's just there. He who ever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven in this life and in eternity. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, teach me to revere Teach me to be in awe. Teach me to love the Holy Spirit. Never let any blasphemy, joking, unconsciously, consciously ever be uttered from my mouth in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've never seen anything more serious in my life. Every other thing, murder, every other thing, prostitution, every other thing, porn, every other of those, anything will be forgiven. Anything can be forgiven. But Jesus, I mean, the word of God, the Father says, anyone that sins against the Holy Spirit, he would never be forgiven. You know those people who say, uh, like if they want to um, emphasize something, they say, kabosh, kapash, kadi, kasaya. It's wrong. It's wrong. 
He's not your exclamation. He is God. He is God. He's the third person of the Holy Trinity. He is God. He's not a wind. He's not fire. He's not a river. He's not a thing. He's the almighty God. You cannot use him to swear. You cannot use him for expression. You cannot use him for exclamation. He's God. We have to revere the Holy Spirit. God the Father is in heaven. God the Son is in heaven. It's the Holy Spirit we have here with us. He's the one who never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's the one who goes with us. Whether we're in trouble or not, the Holy Spirit is the one that sticks closer than a brother. He is God. He does not have anything less than Jesus or the Father. He's God. He's the Spirit of the Father. He's the Spirit of the Son of God. He's the Spirit that rose up Jesus Christ from the dead. He must be honored. Every one of the things I've said can be touched. The Holy Spirit cannot be touched. He must never be insulted. He must never be disdained. He must never narrowly or unknowingly even be blasphemed. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Lastly, number eight. The Bible says in Psalm 105 verse 15, do not touch my anointed. Do not touch the anointing. Do not touch my anointed ones. I've heard this say, you can't say this about the man of God. You can't say this about this. You can't say this about that. It's true. But do you know that you are also an anointed of God? Do you know that the Lord God Almighty honors the, the, the work of his hand? He honors the one he has created over and above every other creation. Because you belong to Jesus, because you are born again, Jesus is the anointed one. Jesus is the Messiah. You are the anointed one too. I'm not going to stand there and let a man who calls himself a man of God, that preaches holiness, that is fooling everybody, stand there and touch my breast to defile my body and then I said no I touched him I smacked him his eye broke he's anointed I'm anointed and he's falling off the glory a lot of people he came back to tell me that do you know that if you allow me to sleep with you every anointing every power everything I carry you will get it no did you sleep with somebody before you got your own no let me go after God let me obey God let me do everything that the Lord God Almighty has told me so don't be intimidated when who used to be a man of God stands before you to defile you. Look at them also and say, you cannot touch the anointed of God. The Lord paid a price for all of us. So it's not just people in fivefold. It's you also. A man of God that's lusting after you in their heart. A man of God that's praying that you will not marry. So your dysfunction can be an advantage to which they control you. May the Lord rebuke such men and women of God in the name of Jesus. May every satanic control over your life may be broken today. God will not allow anybody to touch you. God will not allow anybody to touch your children. That's why honor is mutual. They honor you, you honor them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ just the way it is but you are not going to do something illegal you are not going to do something against God you are not going to do something that God hates and you stand before me and quote this scripture you too stand in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and say Jesus died for me too I'm an anointed I may not be a prophet by office but you will not harm me and you will not touch me in the name of Jesus if I had allowed that man to intimidate my life, he would have raped me and he would have passed on his evil spirit into my spirit. He would have emptied me of glory and the grace and the glory of God that is upon my life. Don't let anybody intimidate you. I, is that how you talk to a man of God? Is that how you talk to me too? Honor, is, it goes both ways. You don't intimidate me. You cannot inundate me. Your office, your position, your title means nothing when you're using it to exploit my life. Make sure it does not happen to you. And I laid it down as a rule in this church. When I teach you something or I ask you to do something that is not in the world, please bring it to my attention. You will be saving my soul. I myself may not know. Do not touch the one that the Lord died for. 
Don't mess with them. Don't gossip about them. Don't kill them behind them with, the, with your tongue. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 8. He says, for thus says the Lord God of hosts. He sent me after glory to the nations that plunder you. God goes after nations. He goes after people. He goes after anyone that plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. Tell yourself this morning, I am the apple of God's eye. I am the apple of God's eye. I am untouchable. I am a holy thing. I'm set apart for God. I'm consecrated for God. Put your hand upon your children. They are holy unto the Lord. They are set apart from the Lord. Devourer must not touch them. Rapist must not touch them. Evil people must not even look at them. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8.33. It says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. You are not to punish me. My life is not in your hand. It is God who justifies me. I'm justified by God. Lastly, Revelation 14 verse 4. He said, these are the ones who were not defiled with women for they were virgins. These are the ones who followed the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men. These kind of people are regarded as first fruits to God. And because they're first fruits to God, they're untouchable. They're first fruits to God, they're first fruits to the Lamb. They are untouchable. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may God help us in Jesus' name. Please give me Mark 12, 17. I'll close there. Mark 12, 17. Actually, that simply explains and it just says that um, give to God what belongs to God and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Isn't that amazing? Give the things of God, the holy things, the dedicated thing, the consecrated things, give it to God. This is the Lord Jesus Christ saying, render to Caesar. In other words, give to Caesar, give to your government, give to the things that needs to be to the government and give to God the things that are God. Shall we rise? I don't know why I'm so hot this morning. It's not my cape. And the blouse I have is light. But there's a, another fire on the altar. There's another presence of the Lord God Almighty on the altar. I want you to just talk to God right now. I want you to rededicate your life to God. I want you to rededicate your walk with God. I want you to rededicate uh, this journey to God, this adventure to God. I want you to rededicate this year to God and tell the Lord God Almighty what is on your mind. The Lord knows that we are unable to do every one of these things. That's why he gave us the helper, the Holy Spirit. That's why he said that that uh, 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 I will not leave you as orphans, but I will give you my spirit. I will give you another helper, another one who is exactly like me. I want you to rededicate everything about you to God and say, Lord, what is mine, I will keep. What is yours, I will give you. I will give you all the glory. I will give you all the worship. I will give you my first fruit. I will give you my tithe. I will give you my body. I will give you my firstborn. I will give you Lord God Almighty, everything that belongs to you, all glory, all honor belongs to you. I will never touch them. Let pride not find expression in my life. Let pride not find expression in my destiny. Let self, self, self content, self, oh, I got this. No, 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 I don't got it. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I need your help. Lead me, guide me, guard me. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, make me a holy dedicated thing unto yourself. Uh, let nothing be able to touch me. The evil of men, conspiracies of men. Father, you have been so good to me. You have been so kind to me. You have watched over me jealously. You have not allowed anybody even in the time of ignorance to take advantage of me. Yes, they abused. Yes, they cheated. Yes, they stole from me. But Lord God Almighty, where are they today? No fruit, no harvest. Uh, I bless you, my Lord. Uh, you 
are my keeper. You are my strength. Give me my life entirety to honor you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, let my life glorify you, O God. In the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, let my children honor you. Let my life honor you. Let my ministry, my calling honor you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let me never touch your glory. It does not matter how many temple of praise international church you use me to pioneer. It does not matter how big, how mighty, majestic you will make what you want to do on earth. All glory shall be to you. For the beauty you've given me, the charisma you've given me, the grace you've given me. I have nothing that I have not received from you. I bless her. Nothing that I own that I have not received from you. I did I'd not create anything. This church is not my own. This church does not belong to anybody. Because it does not belong to me, I cannot give it to anybody. The church is yours. The people are yours. I draw no one, no attention, nothing to myself, Jesus. It's just been a privilege to do what you wanted done in DMV. I give you my life. I give you my firstborn and only child. She's been dedicated to you. A holy thing unto the Lord. Untouchable to the enemy. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I honor and I bless you. Everything that wants to reduce your glory to religion, anything that speaks against the glory and the power of your presence over this house and in this house, Father, dwarf them, make them to be a non-existent thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything holy shall be given unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I give you glory, my Father. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ.